A bird's eye view from the world's tallest hill, Poto, Oklahoma, where a cup of coffee brings the community together. You think I should stop after the red? Anybody that has any kind of need, we just send them a blanket. While they stitch, how come David didn't come, Debbie? They chat. Uh, Might be six months from now. And lately, a lot of the town's talk has been about finding jobs is not easy right now. Employment has been a problem in LaFleur County, along with surrounding Sequoia and Latimer. I know we have the unemployment office, but if there's not any jobs to have, they can't really send them anywhere. The state's unemployment expert says it has to do with manufacturing. Over the past decade, the area has accounted for some of the state's highest unemployment. In August, close to 11 percent of residents were unemployed in LaFleur County, twice the 5 percent the state boasts on average. Financial expert Jake Dollarhide has noticed a trend. So there's still work to be done, and, and, and obviously, you, you take a lot of the counties that are having the problems are border counties, Arkansas to either border into Arkansas or border to Texas. He says some businesses may opt to move across the state border. Plus, many in Poto go to Fort Smith, Arkansas, for work, and the Whirlpool plant there recently shut down, sending 1,000 jobs to Mexico. At the same time, another blow, right in the town of Poto. Cracker manufacturer Brimner moved to Kentucky, taking with it 400 jobs. Everybody worked at Brimner's. You know, that was a hard hit on Poto. And Rose Hubbard knows all too well. And I thought, well, this company's been here for years. I'm going to have a job where I can settle down, retire. Instead, she found herself laid off. At age 52. We had considered moving back north. My mom would have been extremely happy if I had, but because of my children being here and I have grandchildren here, you know, that's a difficult decision. State experts say the challenges in the southeastern part of the state have to do with a volatile manufacturing market. Even so, the state treasurer paints a brighter picture statewide. A lot of that's tied to the energy industry and manufacturing goods that are important to the energy sector. But these aren't energy jobs. It's not energy centric. Uh, a, lot, a lot of chicken farmers, uh, a, lot of, a lot of manufacturing. Still, the state treasurer touts a strong state economy. And Dollar Hyde agrees, but says it's not perfect by any means. We can make a lot of improvements. We, 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 have, we have a long ways to go. And this town certainly feels that. The plant's closure affected the entire community, from the outskirts all the way down to Main Street. That's why the community decided to take action. Starting with the Technology Center that now offers special training to those recently laid off. To give them something in their hand when they walk out the door that they can go and maybe be a little better prepared for the opportunities that they may find. It's an opportunity Rose is taking advantage of. Where do we go? Where do we, where do we go to get another job? You know, if you don't have retraining and get some kind of skills behind you, it's going to be hard to find another decent job. The local chamber is helping, too. It's working to find uh -huh. an employer to fill this empty space, all while highlighting what the community does have. We have a very highly trained workforce right now. And we have a big, huge workforce right now. I can't hardly wait to finish. And then trying to get there's the community right opening side. its arms. Do whatever you got to do to help that person that's next to you. There to help stitch up the wounds and pick up the pieces. The town with the world's tallest hill is determined to look up. Marla Carter, 2 News, works for you.